So it's kind of connect. How are you? <laughs> good. Uh, apologies for the delay. No, all good. I mean, little kids, right? They uh, can delay things pretty easily. <laughs> so late, and then we had to call the grandparents in Spain, and it took a little too long, and then she was too hyper, and uh, <laughs> she's asleep, sound asleep now. So that's good. All right, very cool. How was the time in Spain? Good. She didn't see her grandparents for like one and a half year. And the last time she saw them, she was one and a half year of age. So uh, it, it was it was a good thing that she finally saw them. So, right. um, yeah, good holiday. Awesome. That's fun. And I mean, I didn't know that uh, you were a mother now. So congratulations on that. <laughs> <laughs> How has that, that whole experience been like so far? <laughs> I tell everybody, like, I would rather go into the cage with five cyborgs than to give birth ever again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's extreme. <laughs> yeah, believe me. I, well, women are so like, yeah, I give birth to three kids. Yeah, well, whatever. You know, it's like, what the fuck? You give birth to three kids down. <laughs> this is what I do now. Right. Yeah. All the athletes that think they have these awful, busy lives. No, you don't. Become a mom <laughs> I'm a dad and then you'll find out and i have just one kid eh? just yeah just one kid <laughs> and uh so. not looking for any more at the moment right one's enough <laughs> <laughs> no. you had a documentary made about you right uh, about your last fight specifically with with julia bud and I've been, I've been trying to watch it but i haven't been able to get my hands on it yet so i was just kind of curious though like what was it like doing that and having you know i guess a film crew around your whole camp and everything right what was it like well, no, doing I that he, f he followed me for a few years. Okay. So I started, uh, but it was fun because we, <laughs> I love food and the, the whole crew loved food. So we were always discussing the best olive oil and shit like that. And well, if we went to the States, they were filming me in Whole Foods and I was like, going crazy. Like, oh, look at this. And, you know, so, so no, it, it was, a, yeah. And then we, uh, that was just fun to do. But it started out, he did a, a video clip for I called Tiny Love. Who heet die gast from me? Yeah, Tiny Moss. Love, yeah. Who? Moss. Moss. Oh, M O S S. Yeah, you see, uh, or uh, fight the brain. So he did a video clip, and even if I watch that clip today, that is such a strong emotion. It, it, you should check it out because it's a beautiful song, and he made a beautiful. Not because I'm in it, but it's a beautiful <laughs> song, and it's a beautiful clip. So I knew he had quality and I knew he was obsessive and I like people who have a high quality and are obsessive in whatever they do even if they're big breads I'm a big fan so and then he came to me that he wanted to do a long documentary and um, so no I knew it would be the outcome would be really good so I told him like you can film whatever you want I give you carte blanche because I want to know you know everybody has this blind spot about themselves and I want to know what mine is and um Later on, when the, I'm, I'm happy with the documentary, but I also learned like a documentary is a story and they're looking for storylines and it need, there needs to be drama in it, there needs to be a laugh in it, you know. There needs, so I understood that if you're making a documentary, it is always the view of the director and it's not, of course, the blind spot that I was looking for, but it's a, it's a good uh, documentary it's still it was on in the cinema and on dutch television and it's if i'm correct it's still online at the public uh, broadcast uh, network okay if you really want to have it i will check if i can find but it's in dutch <laughs> but it's narrated by bruce dern okay not a bad guy yeah. to have <laughs> in there <laughs> <It's> <laughs> all right yeah no, i because i've been looking for that so uh yeah, I'll keep looking unless uh, you got somewhere I could find it. But <laughs> where it is, but I will I will try to find it for you. All right, cool. Appreciate it, Marlus. But uh, you know, just speaking of you know that end of your career part again, and you know taking on Julia Bud and all the great fighters that you have taken on, because there's a very long list. I'm curious to somebody. I mean, maybe maybe an easy question. I don't know because you did fight Cyborg, but toughest opponent that you have fought in your careers, or someone stands out the most. Yeah, well, it depends on, you know, a fight that comes like this, it's like a wave. You're here in your prime and then you go. But someone's prime, if someone wave is here and the other one wave is here. So even if you're downwards, if they're here in the prime and you're in your lowest, you're still better. Uh, so I have to think about it. Well, actually, it was Becky Levi 
because I was so afraid of her uh, that and that I could actually win that fight. That was one of the proudest moments I had in my life. But fighting Cyborg the first time and losing it, that made me feel like I was a true fighter because I didn't give in until, I don't know, what was the end of the third round or something. And, um, and, and when she hit me, I have told this many, many times, it felt like somebody took a brick and threw it at my head. And the fight was over, I thought to myself, like, okay, Rumor, you just met him, the guy who was attacking with the lamp. <laughs> he needs to hit me as hard as he can. And I don't know if it will be the same as what Cyborg just did. But then I also fought uh, Arlene Blanco in, uh, in Bellator. And she hit me and I saw the fight back and the commentators say, yeah, almost, uh, she almost knocked me loose out. Well, she didn't. But I thought, because the floor was very, uh, um, I'm higher on my feet than she was. And it was very, how do you say, slippery, uh, slip, slippery canvas. But I thought to myself, if she hits me one more time, I will be knocked out. <laughs> she hits so hard. That was the reason I went to the ground. I was like, no, I cannot have too much of this. <laughs> So, yeah, I was so lucky she wasn't that good on the ground back then. I mean, she had, she's not training with Holly Holm and all that stuff. So, yeah, oh, my God, she hit so hard. <laughs> yeah, she didn't underestimate her. That woman, so, every time what I'm watching her now fight in, in Bellator, I'm so surprised that the other women, they just keep standing. I'm like, she hits hard. How can you hang in there? <laughs> they call her anger fist for a reason, right? <laughs> She is so hard. It's a different pain than what Cyborg brings. But I have to admit, the first time that Cy I was fighting Cyborg in, uh, I think, 2009, she hit harder than when I was fighting her in Invicta. Mm. So then the second time I fought, I was like, no, this isn't as hard as, uh, as the first time. It was still hard, though. Right. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of Cyborg. And uh, actually, there are all the women uh, they are fighting. I'm a big fan of. When I was fighting them, I wasn't the nicest person to meet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had this big secret, of course. So I didn't want to have too much contact with them. But yeah, I'm so fucking proud of what the women are showcasing in the cage. And uh, it's only getting better. I mean, look at Rose Namajunas and, and all those amazing fighters. It's 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 wonderful. But I think where I, where I started, you know, the first real uh, world championship in Japan in the year 2000. And we're now 221. And I see the level of competition. I mean, that's a quantum leap. It's it's. Fantastic, and uh, I'm so curious to see where we are in 10 years. How good will the women be then? I know, kind of scary to <laughs> think about how much better it can be, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a feeling to be scared for that. <laughs> uh, would you say that uh, the Becky Levi fight was the one that means most to you? Yeah, because it changed my life, yeah. But then the first time Cyborg was also a biggie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. A lot of great moments uh, in your career, of course, Marlus. And so and you said you're very happy with it, which is great. You know, that's the thing that matters the most. But do you feel like, you know, you've left your mark in the impact in the sport that, uh, you know, kind of receives the appreciation it deserves? Is that something do you care about? Do you feel it like when you look at it that way? I, when I started, there was... Uh, the reason why I started was I did this for myself and there was nothing that I, I, I couldn't, you couldn't dream big because there was nothing, you know, there was a big void. <laughs> and um, so that was my fuel when I was speaking about, about that freedom. And, and if I look back on it, like the lessons that I've learned, that is what I take with me. And now I can give that to other people that are outside of the cage. And, and when I work with them and when I talk to people and it is for me, more relevant than anything else so in the netherlands hardly anyone knows me you know it's like yeah you know the diehards know me and worldwide it's the same thing but would it be nice if they knew me yes of course but do i really care no i don't because i did it for myself and i'm proud of myself and i'm very grateful from all the things that i've learned so um, no it's good and it's oh. now time for a new generation Yes. And uh, I was going to say all that attention might have, could have got annoying too, you know, <laughs> every time you go outside, people are bugging you, right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I'm not built for that either. No. <laughs> so yeah, all worked out then in that regard. But um, it's, it's funny, uh, you know, 
I didn't realize that you had nicknames during your career either, Marlos, uh, with the female Hickson. And I think, did you mention Rumina? But uh, female Hickson, I'm assuming that's just because of all the sub your submission abilities. And you know, yeah. yeah, but I didn't make that up myself. The yeah, so what's the story? Yeah, I'm curious about that. <laughs> I think if I, I have no clue, but if I should guess, it should be Manabu Takashima, probably uh, the journalist. That I think if I have to name someone, right. I think me yeah so uh, yeah I, there was but i didn't know at the time that uh, but there wasn't all the japanese magazines and then uh what did I, yeah but i actually i didn't care too much about nicknames or walk up music you know it was just like i'm here to do a job and only later on i understood that you're not only a fighter you're also an entertainer you need to entertain well for people to want to see you back so, but i was way too much of a martial artist to to care for that or to or too dumb to understand that can also be the case <laughs> fantastic <Don't know>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last thing i'll leave you with though is uh you know as we mentioned your child off the top i'm curious will you ever let them get into mma if they are wanting to train in anything like that <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But it, I hope it's a face, but everything has to be pink. Even her tooth, toothpaste are pink. And she only wants dresses. And she sees me hitting the pets with rumor. And she was in a dojo sleeping uh, in the box and all. So she knows fighting. But I told rumor like when she's four, maybe when she's five, I want her to learn uh, wrestling. Because I think wrestling is one of, one of the most important things to learn for a young girl. And she will, will learn how to kick and punch. But even more than that is that she will have freedom to go wherever she wants to go. And if she wants to step into the cage, I will tell her about CTE. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's up to her. And if she steps into the cage, I don't think she will. But if she steps into that cage, I will make sure she will be trained like a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, protective mama bear now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, we'll see you next time.